You know, they say everything old is new again. Well, it kind of sometimes feels like we're back to the good old Cold War days with the, all the threats we face in the world and the possibility of nuclear weapons being used between countries. So, with that said, you might want to get a better understanding of what radiation is, how it can affect you, and the dosages around you. And today, we're going to take a look at this Model S1 radiation detector from Better Geiger, and I'm going to explain to you some basic radiation facts that might help you worry a little bit less. Let's check it out. All right, folks, welcome back. So I want to give you a look around this thing first before we get into what it is and what it does. This is a independent company that has designed this. Very, very neat little system. It started out as a Kickstarter project, and now it's being sold. You can buy it right off their website. It is by BetterGeiger.com. It does have a nice protective case on here. You will have to take that off when you're changing the battery. This is your sensor up front here. Your batteries will go back here, and the cool part about this is, is it takes two double A's. Very, very easy batteries to find, not difficult to hunt down, okay? You've got a nice waterproof case. doesn't come with the case. The case is 35 extra, but let me show you the unit itself. That's the unit itself. And what I like about it is it feels well-made. Another neat thing about this is it's made entirely in the United States. So you're not relying on technology from an unknown source that's made in the USA. This detector, as I said before, uses AA batteries, has a very simple interface designed to be as simple as possible, and has a much higher dose rate. It's also a bit more accurate, too, and we'll get into why in a second. I'm going to turn it on quickly, let you see what it looks like. It's got the OLED, OLED screen, and it will click a little bit. You can turn the clicks on and off. Now, I do have a check source out here, so my radiation level is a little bit higher, and you can buy a check source from them as well. And we'll get into what a check source is. Basically, it's extremely, extremely low amounts of radiation to test your dosimeter out. Um, it's not, you know, anywhere near a dangerous amount. You still have to be careful with it. All right, so let's turn that off so it doesn't distract us while we're doing this. So why is this better? Well, cheap detectors generally use a Geiger tube inside them. And they usually go up to about one microsievert per, per hour, or even less. They can also overreact to beta radiation, and because of that, dramatically overestimate your dose rate, okay? So, this is definitely a bit more accurate and a bit more precise in that field. So what we want to talk about first is radiation, okay? Pretty much it's everywhere in our daily lives. I know folks will freak out when they think of radiation, you know, they think of, you know, a 50 megaton bomb going off in their city. Radiation is everywhere. We deal with it every day. Have you ever used a microwave? You know, I mean, it's everywhere. A radiation dosimeter measures the dose and can tell you how much is nearby and what the associated health risks are if you know them. In other words, if you know your, your dosage and you, how much you're supposed to be around per hour or per minute, you know basically if it's going to be dangerous or not. Until recently, if you wanted a low-cost radiation detector, the only decent option was a traditional Geiger counter. And we talked about kind of why they're not that great. Now, thanks to a Kickstarter campaign that started out, there is another new option. It starts at $129, and that's this guy right here. Now, if you've seen other radiation detectors online, um, usually on Amazon, they're kind of fragile. You know, I wouldn't want to drop them. This thing's built like a tank. I mean, it is plastic, but it is built very, very well. Let me show you quickly the battery area back there. Okay. And I just have two regular double A's in there. So it's built like a tank. You have this protective case if you want. It will go on your belt. It has a belt loop. But there is no need for the case if you don't want to spend the extra money. It does come in a protective case of its own here. This is kind of waterproof pelican type case. So let's talk about why this is better than your average tube type dosimeters. The better Geiger counter detects radiation using a solid scintillator instead of a traditional Geiger tube. It's got a higher sensitivity, better accuracy, and a higher maximum range than a low-cost Geiger counter has. It was also designed from the ground up to make it very easy to use. So folks that don't know radiation, you know, you may be looking at a, a rad meter you bought from somewhere and going, what the heck does that mean? What does that mean per hour? What's that weird little symbol and MS and US and all that? What does it all mean? Well, this is very, very simple and it will give you that information very easily, okay? What is radiation dosimetry? Okay, what does a dosimeter do essentially? It means measuring the health risks of a given radiation field. This generally means measuring x-ray and gamma radiation levels. 
Now, the traditional low-cost way to do that is with a gas-filled Geiger tube. It simply counts the number of rate times radiation interacts with the tube every time it bombards the tube. But it has a few weaknesses. First, because the tube is filled with gas and not a solid material, X-ray and gamma radiation has a low chance of interacting, meaning low sensitivity to X-ray and gamma, of course. Second, the tube doesn't know if it's a high or low energy particle interacting with it, so you get poor accuracy in everyday situations. Um, you may want to measure if your microwave's leaking. You're going to get poorer accuracy using a tube compared to something like this with the scintillator. Now, finally, a Geiger tube gets saturated very easily in strong radiation fields, meaning low and maximum range in a high radiation environment. So you can get a low reading in a very, very high radiation environment and think you're safe when you're not. And those kind of fields activate usually happen when you're going to need this most, say during a radiological emergency like a meltdown or a radiological attack. So what's better about this one? Okay. Well, most professional grade personal radiation dosimeters use that scintillator instead of a Geiger tube. Um, when radiation interacts with a scintillator, it creates a tiny burst of light. And counting these bursts of light and how intense they are, radiation can be leveled. Unlike a traditional Geiger tube, which simply counts the intensity, all right? So you're getting the individual bursts and it can produce a much more accurate radiation dose. Uh, radiation information, not dose on your information, in other words. Additionally, the bursts are very short, meaning high radiation levels can be measured. Unlike a Geiger tube, which gets saturated very, very easily. Now, if you've ever taken apart some of the new modern um, rad detectors and dosimeters on, uh, on Amazon, you'll notice there's a little glass tube in the end of them. One side's a battery, one side has that glass tube. That's the tube we're referring to. Now, here's the cool part. Professional detectors using the scintillator typically have price tags around 1000 and beyond. The better Geiger was designed from the ground up for ordinary people, and it is much, much more affordable, $129. Okay? I'm going to give you a couple specifications, then we're going to test it out with the check source. The dimensions on this without the rubber protector are about 2.9 by 1 inch by 4.6 inches tall. Okay? The weight on it is about 4 ounces or 120 grams. Your operating conditions for optimal use is around 14 Fahrenheit to 104 Fahrenheit. That would be, let's see, minus 10 Celsius to about 40 Celsius. You do have an OLD, OLED display, kind of similar to that little shortwave radio I showed you a while back. Uh, now, the um, dose rate is automatically energy corrected according to incoming X-ray and gamma spectrums. Okay? Now, your normal operation dose rate for cesium-137, which is the source, is about 4,000 microservits per hour. All right, so that's the source. That's what we're using here as a check source today. So we're gonna check it out and see what it's like. Let me move everything out of the way here. I'll put the check source on the table. Now you can handle the check source. You can touch it. You're not gonna immediately die of radiation poisoning. It's a good idea to be careful with it and maybe keep it somewhere where it's not gonna be constantly interacting with you. Maybe stick it in a safe somewhere, but it's not, you know, it's the lowest possible dose possible to give a reaction to a Geiger counter. So don't worry about that. And it is extra. I believe they run about $45 for the check source. And there are some restrictions on it, so it's only shipped inside the United States. So let me get it out here. Let me put the cover back on this uh, radiation detector, and let's give it a shot. All right, so you can see our levels. Okay. That's normal, a normal exposure level. That's about normal for our area. Now I'm going to move this closer to here. Now don't expect it to freak out, although it is kind of... You hear that, right? <laughs> And you'll watch the level climb, especially since it's right on top of it. Now, we're nowhere near approaching dangerous or deadly levels at all. It's just a way to check it and see. You can hear it definitely reacting. Then as I move it away, the ticking slows down. I'm going to go through the screens with you. Now, if you want to reset this for any reason, you can push and hold this middle button. And if you want to turn the clicks off, which we're going to do while we're doing the demo here, you just push that down. Your next screen is this, your CPM, okay? This is a meter to show you your time, your, your exposure time and rate. And this is since power on, all the information right there. It's kind of small. I'll see if I can move that up so you can read it. And this is your detector data. This is the firmware, the calibrations, the model number, all that. This is a dark mode. If you want to save the battery, you can keep this dark, and it still will work. No, oh, wait. Turn it back on. It'll still work but it'll just flash a little bit of light when there's something there. And then you go back to your normal screen. So this is really what you want to talk about right here. 
your micro sieverts per hour, okay? And we're getting a dosage of 0.014, which is very, very low. It's not, you know, this isn't something that's going to kill you at all. <laughs> You're fairly safe. But as you move closer to the check source, see that shot up to 53 from 9. So it's definitely doing its job. You can see that this works and this will do what it will keep, give you a good idea. Now your friend, when it comes to radiation, let me turn this off, are three things. Time, distance, and shielding. Time, because radiation decays naturally after a while. That's why it's called half-life. Or you know, every every seven or so days, it decays off. So over time, your radiation levels outside of an environment are going to go down. Distance, meaning how far away you are from the emergency. If say this is Las Vegas and your nuclear emergency is here, and I'm over here, let's say in Perum, I'm pretty well shielded. I've got mountain ranges, but you still want to keep an eye on the winds for fallout. But as far as the initial blast and radiation, you're pretty well shielded. Now, you're going to get a dose. You're going to get a nasty dose. You still want to protect yourself. But the idea is you want distance away from the event. Okay? If you can get away, by all means, hop in your car and get away. Shielding. What's shielding? Well, shielding could be anything. Shielding could be a lead wall, which will give you beautiful shielding. It could be a bunch of furniture piled up in the middle of your room with you underneath it, with everything on top of you. Um, that gives you a little more shielding inside your house, under your roof. You know, you got levels of shielding. Is it perfect? No. But if you look up some of the old Cold War manuals on how to survive a radiological attack, that is something they do recommend. Of course, they recommend a basement, and I think basements were a little more common back then, at least out here in the Southwest. So we really don't have basements. So let me explain to you quickly, okay? Um, that's basically the review of the item, but I want to explain to you quickly what do the numbers on a radiation detector mean, okay? And I want to give you this information because it's pretty inter interesting, and it also will kind of calm your fears a little bit, too. So what do the numbers on a radiation detector mean? Well, there are several types of radiation, and those types can have different energies. What's important in terms of human health is what type of radiation interacts with your body, where it interacts, and how much energy it deposits. All your organs are pretty sensitive, are, are varying how sensitive they are, to uh, some type of radiation. It's more or less. They'll do more damage to some, less damage to others. That's why if you've ever seen the potassium iodide people are telling you about, they are not radiation pills. They don't protect you from radiation. They block radioactive th uptake in your thyroid. They basically flood your thyroid so you can't uptake any radiation in there. That's a very sensitive area that will take a lot of radi radiation in quickly, so you want that. The overall story can get a little complicated. People ultimately boil it down to a given field measurement, which can be like dose rate, okay? Basically, that's what you want to boil it down to, your dose rate, okay? This is the number that tells you how fast you're receiving the radiation dose in your body, in that location, assuming your entire body is exposed uniformly to that field, wherever it's being measured. So in other words, assuming that you are here and that radiation is all around you, how much you're getting in that dose rate, okay? Now, the dose rate doesn't tell you the entire story either. That's going to get a little more complicated. How long a person is exposed to a dose rate is extremely important. So we got the time again. Remember time, distance, and shielding? The combination of dose rate and time exposed is what counts. Depending on the intensity of the radiation field, even if it's above normal, a person can safely be exposed for a short period of time. The stronger the radiation field, the shorter a time you can be exposed to it. At slightly elevated radiation levels, if a person is exposed long enough, that's where you get your long-term cancer risks from, okay? Now, in rare cases, extremely high dose rates, if a person receives that, can be life-threatening in a very short time. Basically, a good analogy would be like if you're driving a car towards a cliff. If you drive fast, you can't safely be in that car for long. But if you drive slowly, you have some time before you need to worry. It's not a perfect analogy, but basic principle is what's important. Something to think about that's a common occurrence is uh, an x-ray image at the doctor's office. An x-ray beam is very powerful, but a person's only exposed to it for a very short time. Now, me growing up, my dad was a dentist, and I still remember the lead blanket they'd put over you, over the front of you, when they do x-rays of your teeth. But again, it was a millisecond. You know, I remember, I actually remember doing that for my dad, clicking the, the uh, machine off in another room when he'd tell me to click it to take a picture, an x-ray. Now, real quick, so I don't bore the heck out of you guys, there's two units basically used to measure dose. 
the Seabird and the Rem. The Rem's also been preferred in the United States. You hear, you know, like how many Rems they've been exposed to. Whereas the Seabird is kind of like the international standard and it's preferred elsewhere. Conversion between the two is simple. 100 Rem is equal to one Seabird. So let's say if you were exposed to 0 0.5 Seaverts per hour for three hours, multiplying the two together means your dose rate would be 1.5 Seaverts, okay? That would be an extremely large dose. In order to matter, normally a background dose would be close to, let's see, what is it, like eight zeros, and 0 0.8 zeros, or five zeros, or six, seven zeros, and a one. I forgot. It's basically a millionth of a sievert, meaning the previous would be, your exposure rate would be 0 0.1 micro sievert per hour, okay? And as you saw there, we were 0 0.5, okay? Or 0 0.8 when it really shot up with the check source. So, again, it's not a life-threatening dose. It's not you know, going to hurt you, still a good idea to practice safety with it and have some common sense. Uh, they do give you a little bit of a disclaimer when you get the source itself here that will tell you that you'll do all this stuff and you agree that you're going to follow all legal, ethical, and safety guidelines. You know, you're not going to take this and put it somewhere to trip an alarm. Um, you know, I would not suggest putting that in your pocket and going through an airport. God, no. <laughs> Tons of detectors in, in sensitive places. So basically, you agree that you're only going to use this for scientific purposes. All in all, what do I think of the unit? I think it's pretty darn awesome. I mean, to be able to uh, detect radiation in a very simple, basic way, to be a lot more accurate than the t standard tube-type detectors, and for it to be so rugged, you know, and the added bonus of being made in the U.S., you know, that's a nice feature. There's not many things left made in the U.S. anymore, so it's nice to see electronics coming out of the United States. I do like the packaging. They do give you this nice case and a little carabiner here, but uh, definitely like that. It's definitely a convenient way to pack this device up. You do have the AA batteries. Um, something I've always thought about when it comes to rechargeable stuff when, like, like this. All right, let's face it, there's gonna be that person that charges this up, puts it away for five years, and then there's an event. Well, then he's gonna be stuck, <laughs> okay? You're gonna be stuck because that battery is gonna be dead and may not be able to take a charge anymore. Whereas if you store this without batteries, like I recommend for most items that aren't going to get a ton of use, um, you know, I'm not going to be out there using this every day checking for, you know, radiological emergencies. Uh, something like this is very handy because you can take the batteries out. And when you need it five years from now, you put in a fresh set of batteries and you're ready to go. If you let a rechargeable battery sit for five, ten years and then you have an emergency and you haven't charged it up over time, you might have a problem. So I really like the item. I'm going to give you a quick little... Uh, Price list on everything. The actual detector itself is $129. The check source is $45. They are expensive. That's normal. They're just expensive. You know, it's the idea of having to deal with radiological material and package them and put it in here. It's encased in some plastic in this. As you can see, some plastic on the bottom there. Um, the case, if you want the case, it is $35 extra. But the detector itself, hey, you can't go wrong with this thing. I really think it's very handy. With a little bit of brushing up and kind of understanding radiation, the more you understand it, the less you fear it. So the more you learn about this kind of stuff that can be scary to the average person, the less you fear it. And having something like this that I can pull out of this box and take with me and walk around an area and kind of survey and say, okay, what's going on? What's in my immediate area? I would recommend looking up the dosage. Unfortunately, I have it printed and it's in my book. I have a book that I print all my important stuff that I find online and put it away as storage material. Um, but there are dose rates for what you want to know that has an elevated risk of cancer, elevated risk of illness, and really bad stuff too, um, as opposed to very low doses. So that's fine, kind of handy to do. And there's tons of places you can look that up online. So I want to thank you folks for watching. I don't want to drone on too long. I did want to give you a little bit of information on the measurements and how this thing works. Um, it does come with a very, very nice manual tells you understanding the numbers, what it means. You even have a little bit of dosage rate information in here. So it's definitely a cool little system, and I would definitely recommend it. Um, I think this is going to replace uh, my other, was it, uh, I have a G, GMC um, model, and I think it's going to replace that because that's a tube model, and this is a little more sensitive. Plus, I like the fact that I can take the batteries out. The other one I have to keep charged all the time. I have to bring it out, charge it up every few months, to make sure it's at 100%. So, folks, thanks for watching. The link to this will be down below. You can check him out. Again, 
I'm not making anything off this. I just want to bring good products to you folks. And I think this is a really high quality product that takes away some of the fear. You know, we think about, oh man, what if a nuclear attack happens? Well, this is a way to know what's going on and take out some of that unknown. And un people that, you know, when you're in a situation that's unknown, you tend to have a little fear. This is a good way to keep yourself informed and educated during an event. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. The link will be down below for this. They are better Geiger radiation detectors, model S1, and uh, definitely a cool little product. Don't forget to check out all our other links below. We have our freeze-dried wholesaler link, and don't forget, we have our contest coming up, our giveaway. It's coming up on the 2nd, so make sure you check out my older videos, about two, three, four, five videos back, where you put your name there, leave your name underneath, and we'll pick a winner on the second. Don't forget to check out our My Patriot Supply. We've got $250 off a three-month kit on that site. Preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com. We also have a four-week kit. If you're not interested in such a large kit and you want to start prepping on a budget, it's a good way to get a lot of food really quickly into your house. And up below that is our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. Don't forget to check that out as well. I am seeing a lot of orders come in from Thrive. Um, people are starting to prep. You know, I don't have real-time access to what you guys are ordering from uh, freeze-dried wholesalers. He usually just lets me know um, to know, you know, what, what stuff is in demand, what stuff isn't, what stuff I might want to show you guys, new products, whatever. So I don't have real-time info on that, and I don't have always real-time info on my Patriot supply, but I can definitely see the demand out there for getting long-term storage food is there. So definitely get stocked up. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.